Welcome to the MTR Network. We are here on a Supergirl Super Tuesday to discuss uh, Season 2, Episode 5, Crossfire. I wrote it down this time. <laughs> <laughs> it was written by a couple of newbies, too. Because yeah. when I looked up, they do not have a lot of writing credits. Um, well, it's, like, the, it's Gabriel Yanis. Is that how you pronounce that double L? I think sign? so, yeah. Um, he wrote like one episode of Grey's Anatomy. Mm-hmm. And a <laughs> like, few episodes of Private Practice, which yeah. is a spinoff. Um, and then Anna Muskie Goldwyn, she wrote two episodes for Supergirl last year. And then she's mm-hmm. written something for this collection of sorts called Labyrinth that's coming out next year. Yeah. But otherwise, she doesn't have any other writing credit. And I really like the episode that she wrote last year. She wrote uh, Childish Things. That was the episode mm-hmm. where we found out that uh, Wynn's dad was the toy man. Yes. Um, so that was actually a really, really good episode. I'm very impressed with her. I just I looked up the writers this week just because I thought there were so many good, funny lines that I was like, <laughs> who wrote this? Like, I was like, all these characters are hilarious. Who wrote this? Yeah. Um, oh, uh, before we get too deep into Supergirl, I just want to let our listeners know that if you do not know, tomorrow the new Invincible Iron Man launches with Riri Williams. Um, I will ah. be at my comic book shop first thing tomorrow morning because there's like four variant covers that I want. <laughs> and I want to make sure I get them all. So I called my comic book shop and he was like, he's like, well, we don't set aside variants because it's not first come, first serve. But, you know, if you get here, we open at 10 a.m. And I was like, guess who will be there at 10 a.m.? <laughs> <laughs> it'll be this guy um, <laughs> so you know just a little plug for that and I will probably talk about that next week as well nice. like, what's I've up, been Betty? making my way I picked back up on The Walking Dead and it's I see what people are saying the, some of the writing is still off some of the characters are still insufferable but the the story arcs do get better around the back end of the prison episodes yeah I, after that arc, I just went ahead and read through two or three more, and it was just like, oh my gosh, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I, because I stopped reading them. Like, my friend had the hardcovers, and I think I stopped after volume two. It's, I mean, it's not that it just wasn't holding my interest other than wanting to see the stuff I had already seen on the TV show. Mm-hmm. So, can't do it, guys. Sorry. Um, I really liked Outcast though, Kirkman's other one that now has a television mm-hmm. show. Yeah, on Cinemax, right? Yeah, I really like the writing for that comic. I've read a couple of issues of that. Um, all right, so season two, episode five, Crossfire. I guess I didn't even really contemplate the title. I guess that refers to all these different guns and stuff, these ray guns and whatnot. Um, but also- <laughs> I also got the sense it was across purposes. Like, yeah. Cadmus used these thugs to kind of advance their own agenda, but didn't, you know, didn't... Re- I think they kind of realized because the Cadmus scientist body, which we'll talk about who she's revealed to be with in a minute, kind of knew who she was working with, which is why she had her contingency in place for them. But it, they really were working at cross purposes. For yeah. her, she's like, I'm trying to get an agenda across, and you're just busy trying to line your pockets. Okay, so I'm saving the best for last, which is Mike. <laughs> so we're going to get into this because when the robbers first showed up, I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, I don't even understand why anybody steals anything in this city. So I was so <laughs> happy that there was a twist of like, like it was, she was like, those bullets don't even hurt me. And he was like, I didn't bring bullets. So I was like... Thank you, because this needed a twist. I could not deal <laughs> with another set of bank robbers trying to rob a bank in Supergirl City like that was going to go down. <laughs> they, it was too much. Um, but it's like the bank robbers were also so short-sighted. Mm-hmm. Like they were just like, we're just going to keep robbing bigger banks and bigger banks and bigger banks. And I was like, mm-hmm. really? Like, is this all like... Why? Like, what do you hope to accomplish? It's like this is, all you, this is all you hope to accomplish with your life. Exactly. It's like the people on the Flash. Like, 
I love Captain Cold, and I thought, like, Mirror Master was also a cool villain. But mm-hmm. I'm like, is this it? You're just going to rob banks? Like, and if that's the case, take your powers to a different city and rob banks. Why are you going to rob banks in the Flash's city? <laughs> like, he's going <laughs> to obviously stop you. Like, I, I just don't get it. I, I guess, you know, rob is going to rob, criminal is going to crim. I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, so I was glad that there was a twist to this one and that Cadmus was behind it, which I saw immediately. Yeah. I was also glad that that wasn't a mystery. Like when Alex was like, oh, Cadmus releases this video like five minutes after (laughs) these bank robbers, like clearly they gave them the weapons. I was like, oh, good. I just have to say the good thing about this season of Supergirl with the writing is that they're not doing the thing where it's like, taking forever to figure out these mysteries about things that are obvious yeah that is nice because i was just like if they don't figure out immediately that cat miss is behind this i'm gonna be angry and then alex was like oh, oh it's right there in behind face. it like like it's clearly in your face and while they did go ahead and throw the bone like oh in case you didn't know it was us here's us infiltrating the deo again with your feed to let you know it's us exactly. but at least they knew before that even happened like oh it has to be them yeah, that that just made me happy. I'm, I do not have time for the, I wonder who could be behind this. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, that is just not. And even the reveal that we get at the end of uh, who, I, did they actually name her? Did they give her uh, a name? She's, she's their mom. She's Lena's mom. Yeah, but did they give her a name before this? Like, does her character have a name? Um, so on, that was the thing I did put in my written reviews. Like, a shout out to them for not. She was just listed as Cadmus scientist. They did okay. not give her name at okay. all. I'm looking now to see though if they did this episode. Okay, because like I had looked up Cadmus on Wikipedia a couple of weeks ago, and there was someone that I thought she would be. Oh, no, she's still listed as Cadmus Scientist. Cadmus Scientist. Scientist. So yeah. there was someone that I thought she would be based on who her character was, um, based mm-hmm. on the creator of um, those alien guys with the kryptonite in their chest. Um, I mm-hmm. thought they were basically like gender bending that character. Um, oh. So I'm glad they didn't give her a name. Because obviously the reveal was going to be like what her name was. Um, but I'm also glad that usually I get annoyed. It's like that once upon a time thing where everybody in the town is related. And you're like, why is everybody someone's second cousin or sister or auntie? But this time I was actually happy to find out that two characters were related. <laughs> right. Because this gives it more depth. And like even in this episode when like Lena kept showing up and being really nice with Kara and and inviting her to the party and all that other stuff, I was just like, she's so awesome. This is going to suck when she turns out to be evil. (laughs) (laughs) And here it is. It may not be her after all. Exactly. Or what I'm thinking we might get is something happening to her mother. You know, we get that, um, old Spider-Man, uh, green goblin story like something happening to her mother then which tips her over the edge because like at this point it's like her brother's in jail because of superman so she reasonably should have a grudge there right but she doesn't but uh, i could see if something happened to her mom that kind of being the last straw and being the thing that pushes her over the edge but it's a shame because i really really like her and Kara as friends me too Kara needs a girlfriend outside of Alex. She really does. And she needs, like, like, what's the, she needs, she needs people who don't know her secret around her. Not, not as a way of, like, doing Operation Doubtfire. (laughs) That made me laugh (laughs) so hard. Like, she doesn't just need it so that, like, we can have, like, scenes where she, you know, tries to be both people as once, but also because I think there's something, there's just something healthy about having somebody who like doesn't know every aspect about you. Or it's like, you know, we, like I work with kids. And so sometimes it's really great talking to my 
friends who are in education mm-hmm. and I can vent to them and we can problem solve and all the other stuff. But then also sometimes it's really nice talking to somebody who has no idea about that world mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> and just like not having to think about it at all. So I want, I want that for Kara. I want good things for her. And I will say that was the highlight for me this week is I don't know if it's because she's spending time with people outside of the folks who know her secret and knew her when this week. I'm like, finally, Kara's acting like a grown up. This is what I've been waiting for for 20 plus episodes. (laughs) I I mean, she when it came to um, Mike, she definitely reverted a little bit to old Kara. No. I'm sorry. That's what I, I have to say. As a grown woman, I probably would have reacted to the same way. Like, this is more of you that I ever needed to see in life. More than either of you that I ever needed to see in life. I need y'all to get dressed. That would be me. So I, I'm not even going to say that. No, I just mean, like, you know, that kind of, like, why isn't he more like me? Like, like that kind of, like, attitude. Like, like the oh, whole that time, part. Yeah, 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 yeah. The whole time I was like, Kara girl, he, he is a man. He is a man out here trying to live his manly life. (laughs) Right. (laughs) He got me. Like he said, I ain't had none in 35 years. He was so real about it. No, in 35 years. He's like, I'm having sex because I am grown and I can do that. And I haven't done it in a really long time. Oh, but that also tells us how old Clark is. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. (laughs) Now we know. Because he was a baby. (laughs) He's a a young looking 35. He's a baby face. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess we've kind of transitioned into Mike because you can't not. He's hilarious. <laughs> I was like, oh Mon L bars. Oh, he had God, so he many so lines. Good. Oh my gosh. But he was like, <laughs> he saw Jimmy and he said, Thought you'd be more intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, sorry, I ran out of the bribery coffee. <laughs> like, I was just like, what do you, who calls them the bribery co- He has no filter. <laughs> None. None. Oh, my God. He, he, like, gave homegirl his social <laughs> security number <laughs> when he met her. And then he was like, but then why did I memorize that fake ID? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I have not laughed so hard at an episode of Supergirl ever. I <laughs> like <laughs> all my notes. Are just he was like, the best part. He Chris Wood is part. killing it. Chris Wood is amazing. The, oh, the only thing I was like was like red vines are trash. That was <laughs> that was the only oh, yeah. negative I had. I was like red vines are trash. I can't believe he yeah. needs red. It's vines. all about Twizzlers, baby. Anybody out there listening got a problem with that? Come, come mm-hmm. see me. Fight oh, me. No, I'm no. going to own it. Twizzlers. Twi- all day. I will fight. I have discovered at my local grocery store, um, they have different flavors of Twizzlers, like not just the cherry ones. And my new thing is the peach, the peach twist. I oh, yeah. have been eating too many of them. I'm like a bag a week now. It's like a thing. Oh, God. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I like, you know, I have a problem. It just started last week. <laughs> but I went back and bought some this week, too. <laughs> so, oh, God, when he said on Daxum, when a woman wishes to please a man, she would say, I'm going to stop you right there. Don't even finish that sentence. <laughs> <I was like, laughs> my God, this is hilarious. This is why I looked up the writers, because I was like, we have never had lines like this. <laughs> It was fun. It was absolutely fun for an episode that wound up being kind of heavy. Yes. And in then, some part. Then when, when Kara does walk in with them, it, it wasn't just even like her face. She oh, no, it was, hit it was even wall. before that when she heard them. Oh, yeah. She was like, oh, my God, get out She's of my ears. my ears, my ears now. <laughs> but when she opens the door, she like, if she had pearls on, they would have been clutched. Them. Like she like clutched her chest. She, you know who she looked like? She looked like Sanford from Sanford and Son. <laughs> she like clutched her chest. She fell back into the wall. She was like, "Oh my lord, oh no!" <laughs> 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 like Melissa played that so well. Oh my god! When he said, um, she, she was like, "You can't do this," and he was like, "Are you sure? I've been watching this show about doctors." <laughs> They do it a lot. <laughs> I was like, who wrote this? Who wrote this? It is so good. Like, he, he was not playing around. Like, 
like he was trying to have sex. He was enjoying himself. He's like, why would I do work when homegirl offered to do it for me? For me. It was so good. Oh, uh, but yeah. So Kara learns her lesson. Oh, by the way, you know that's. I'm, I don't know if he's gonna use it. That's gonna be one of the images I use. Yes. <laughs> the right up. Okay, when he okay, my other favorite things is the montage of him getting dressed in the morning. Yes. When he put on that shirt and it was a, a medium shirt. medium shirt <laughs> and the buttons popped. I died. <laughs> I died. I was like, oh, and he's like, this works. Like, no, this does not work, sweet. It, it was work. like the first acknowledgement that television and movies has ever had of the fact that dudes be wearing shirts that are too tight. <laughs> he stay doing that. Like, I love my man Chris Evans, but he stay in a medium shirt. <laughs> like, it was so Oh, great. my God. And then, I'm sorry, backing up, though, the line where she, when she asked Mark, was like, do you have protection? Do you <laughs> mean a sword? <laughs> do you mean a sword? <laughs> it's the best. Oh, my God. No, but then when he did finally find an outfit, I was like, why Kara got this boy dressing like when? She yeah. got him dressing like Clark. True, that too. I was like, my lord, why do we have him in this bow tie and this uh, fits from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., your old auntie sweater? I was so- okay, so I'm going to stop you right there. Like like Eleven says, bow ties are cool. And that's all I'm going to say. Okay, yeah, not on him. <laughs> <laughs> he put them glasses on that boy, covering up all the hotness. How dare you, <laughs> It's like the worst. Um, <laughs> and I did, I, but I did love Alex's. Not everyone can rock Argyle like you do. Because <laughs> I feel like that was a compliment, but it was lightweight shade. It was also shade. It was a lot of shade. <laughs> She's like, um, yeah, so the Argyle ain't for everybody, boo. <laughs> yeah, I, I carried, like, she learned her lesson of the week. She can't try and make. Monel into who she is and all of that because I was just like really we're just getting him a job at Catco we're just making him dress like you <laughs> putting the glass yeah. like I knew where the lesson was going from the beginning of the episode so I was happy that they gave us like lots of really like funny bits in between to like really sell it because it could have just been like your generic Kara's lesson of the week but it was just so funny like Chris Wood is killing this role this is the funniest i've ever seen him because initially he was on that show um the no vampire diaries that's like the first thing i saw him on and he was the villain that season and he was i mean he was ruthless like he killed a ton of people he was really horrible on that show um, and then after that, he was on containment, which got canceled after one season. It was on uh, CW last year, but that show was about mm-hmm. like an outbreak in Atlanta, oh, my like son a viral just, outbreak. My got, yeah. My oldest just got through watching it. He's begging me to watch through yeah. it with him. He said he was so good. Yeah. It was, it was a really interesting show, but it was actually like, like very heavy because it was all mm-hmm. like, you know, people dying of disease. And he played a cop on that uh, show. Like he's basically like this cop that gets caught in the quarantine zone. So he's one of like four cops that are caught in the quarantine zone. And like, it's just anarchy. (laughs) Right. So like, that was also like a very deep kind of a role. So this is just, it's just light and funny. And I just didn't know he had this comedic timing because he was hilarious. Every scene. I just, like, all my notes are like, Mike is hilarious. Chris is killing it. Like, Monel's lines are great. Like, and just direct quotes from the episode. Because <laughs> like, there was just too many good lines. They were just too good. Um, all right. Uh, do you want to talk about Alex or Jimmy? Let's do Jimmy last. Let's talk about Alex. Okay. This is one of the first few episodes where I actually liked what they did with Alex because it, in the group we were talking, I saw where folks were talking about it and they were like, well, why do they have her struggling? It's not like 
win or care would care. But I didn't get that was the impression of what Alex was struggling with. Alex was struggling with her own identity and the idea that she was attracted to this woman and that it never happened before. And I liked the way they handled it. Yeah. It was a little bit of trepidation and nervousness followed by like, maybe she's right. And maybe I just need to follow it. I didn't get that the sense that that was about Alex being worried about what others thought. That was Alex trying to figure out her own confusion about her own feelings. And I really, yeah. I felt like they handled it really, really well. I really liked when she said that line of, um, I can't remember exactly how she said it, but it was basically like, it, it never felt right. And I never questioned why it didn't feel right. Yeah. Cause I think that is something that if you just like never like really set, like, She's obviously never felt attracted, like romantically attracted to a woman before. Until now, Until right. Until now. So like when, when you have that first like kind of romantic attraction, like, and it's not ever what you've thought of before, there is like a moment you have to like think to yourself, it's like, well, in the past, is this how I felt and I was denying it or did I not realize it? And, and it's like, she's coming to terms with all that of like, well, it's not that I felt this way and I was denying it. It's more that I just didn't even realize it and think of it. And the relationships or the people that I have dated, it wasn't that like what she's realizing, what she thought was just like, me and you know so and so aren't compatible was actually like I never really liked that person in that way in the first place yeah like that's what she's realizing um because I think that's true like I haven't been in a lot in a a lot of long-term relationships um and so usually it's just like I don't feel compatible with the person or the timing isn't right or all that other stuff But I can imagine if I, like, started feeling attracted to, like, either a woman or a person that I've never, like, a person that I would never consider my type. Mm -hmm. Like, there would be a moment of, like, looking back on past relationships and be like, well, was this always my type? And I just didn't realize it. Right. What's what's going on with me? (laughs) Like, like, was it me all this time? Like, you know, because that's always the thing is, like... You're always like, well, the common denominator in all these things is me. So maybe it was me all this time. (laughs) And I think that's what it was. Yeah. Like, I don't think she was afraid of, like, even when Wynn said that line of like, well, I was into Kara. It's not like you're into Maggie. I don't think he meant it like, it's not like you're not into Maggie because you're not into women. I think he's just like, oh, you haven't expressed that you liked her. Like, the reason I acted that way was because I was into Kara. (laughs) Right. So, like, until right. you tell me that you're into Maggie, the way you're acting right now doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, all all of my notes about Alex are, like, just me being like, mm-hmm. Like, like because <laughs> I just, like, every time she was, like, realizing something, I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, even when she was sitting in the DEO, like, you know, coming up with China patterns for her and Maggie's, like, new home and you know being distracted when Wynn was trying to brief her on this gun it was just adorable and it was like so for the first time in since the series really started I liked Alex's character yeah my favorite line that she said um was oh we can go to that uh that, that we can go out to that new place the food channels guy new topless place open mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like that is such a thing <laughs> That it just felt like a, a conversation that you really have with like a friend where you're like, oh, the Food Channel's guy's new tapas place opened over on so and so street. Like, we should go check it out. <laughs> like, that's a conversation I have all the time. It felt like just a really. What I like this season is it feels not unscripted, but these people are more comfortable with each other and more comfortable mm-hmm. with their characters. So yes. the lines come across like way more truthful and like honest and like things that you would be saying in a normal conversation, except we're talking about aliens mm-hmm. <laughs> and we're talking about like people who can fly, <laughs> 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 which I really enjoy. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this. I, they, they've built it nice 
and slow and and I like Alex like coming to terms with this and I'm just I'm I'm really excited about this storyline I am too <laughs> like, I am too I did like I knew when they like introduced Maggie and they said that her character was a uh, lesbian I anticipated that there might like obviously you don't make a point of noting that without that being a part of the storyline but I don't know why I never thought that Alex like it just never occurred to me that Alex would be the one to get in a relationship with her but now I'm like of course it makes so much sense I like it a lot Um, (laughs) oh and I I also felt bad for Maggie because she's trying really, really hard right now. And I hope she doesn't turn out to be one of these, like, Cadmus supporters. Like, I hope they don't decide to go that route with her. But why um, would they? They've already portrayed her as someone who's more... True. More ...connected protecting. to alien culture simply because she said, you know, they 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 keep it real. But I think also there's, <clears> like... <throat> she, right now she just can't catch a win. It's like last week she tried to um, arrest uh, Dykin. I can't remember her character name right now. And then this week... Oh, she, uh, Veronica Sinclair. Right? Yeah. And then this week she tried to arrest this guy and he died. I just feel like right now she's just like in one of those paces where like you kind of realize like, oh, what I do and what I stand for doesn't really work in this new world. You know, I don't, but I don't see her turning on aliens because of that. Yeah, I'm hoping not as well because I I wouldn't want that like in terms of because you never know what television shows sometimes they try to create conflict out yeah. of the weirdest things. But I just I want Which... I want her to get a win is what I'm saying, and whether that be like her and Alex start dating or her arrest somebody and it finally sticks, <laughs> I just want her to get a win. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. Yeah. Um, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy on my mind. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I like that they gave Jimmy something to do. I don't <sighs> like the lot the logic leap. This logic leap and the logic leap from the background primary story bugged me. So what? What I really enjoyed about it is like. This is something that they brought up last season, too. Jimmy feeling like he's always just been a side kick and, Mm -hmm. you know, feeling like part of the reason he left uh, Metropolis was to kind of break out on his own and not just be like Superman's best friend. And so I like that this is something that has come along organically from his character. This isn't Mm -hmm. like something that they pulled out of the blue. And he, his dad's camera got wrecked, and that was really sad. I was like, "Yeah, it's like, oh, it's like his." I was like, as a photographer, like not the camera. And then I remember, oh, that's his daddy's camera too. Yeah, that hurt. I was like, I was like, I feel you. I get it. Um, and I, I really enjoyed that. I don't know how I feel about vigilante. Oliver Queen, <laughs> Jimmy Olsen. <laughs> it was just a logic. I mean, I get it. I get it. But it, Jimmy never struck me as someone who, it, it goes, it's, it's almost like they transferred Kara's juvenile way of responding to things and gave it to Jimmy. Because it felt very much like, oh, my friends are all big boys. I want to be a big boy too. And it's like, but that's never been Jimmy. Yeah. Not to say that he's okay just being in the sidelines and in the background. I get Wanting to find your purpose. Trust me, I get that. That part of the conversation between him and Wynn absolutely made sense. But to make that leap to that, I need to be on the front lines getting shot at. Yeah. By that, that leap just, that bugged me. That did bug me. That yeah. said, I feel like Makad acted his ass off. Oh, he's so. just so good. I, I loved uh, when Wynn said to him, Kara can fly. You're just tall. Tall? <laughs> I was like, but he's not wrong. <laughs> he's not wrong. Show me the lie. Like, Show me the lie. Like, you're There's just no tall, bro. Here. Like, get it together. Um, but, okay, so he goes to fight these 
robbers with ray guns with a bat. <laughs> I was saying, <laughs> I know he's called Batman, <laughs> but this is not how he fights crime, sir. <laughs> 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 like, I was thinking, like, he reminded me of, um, what's his name that's on Arrow right now? Not Oliver, um, Wild Dog, that, that character, um, played by, uh, Renee played by the Latino actor. I can't remember his name right now. Um, But he reminded me of that character where he's just like constantly running into danger, just constantly, constantly running into danger. And Mm -hmm. half the time it's like, you are clearly not trained (laughs) to do this. (laughs) Like, I know you got a black belt, but they're using ray guns. (laughs) Like, this is not okay, Jimmy. Like, I was, like at one point, I, like, screamed. I was like, we already have a vigilante show, Jimmy. <laughs> we don't need another vigilante. We're good. Like, Arrow has that all tied up. They got a whole team of vigilantes. Mm-hmm. We do not need this. <laughs> um, I just, I need him to be safe. I need him to be out in these streets being safe. Um... I wondered also if there was, like, a little bit of the male kind of ego with it, too. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, my favorite thing is Kara saving him. (laughs) I think it's great. (laughs) But I I appreciate that they gave him some capabilities. Yeah. Yeah. The whole damsel, dame, dude in distress thing, that gets played after a while. I love it. It's my favorite thing. (laughs) I love it. I just love this like little No, I'm sorry. No, a man that big and that fine cannot be that wimpy. I, I needed him to have some skills. <laughs> no, I'm glad he can fight on his own, but my seriously, my favorite thing is this like little tiny blonde girl jumping in front of this man <laughs> and saving him all the time. It makes me so happy. Ah <laughs> uh, and uh, oh the the <laughs> when Wynn caught him on the camera because he took off his hoodie like immediately while he was running away, which I was kind of conflicted about because I was like, black man running away from the scene of a crime, probably do want to take that hoodie off. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, I don't know which is better or worse. It's like, obviously, you don't want anybody to find out you're running around in these streets, but at the same time, yeah. black man Six running one, around in a hoodie. Half a dozen of another. Yeah. <laughs> Not a good look. Not a good look, even in National City. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like we're getting another hero added to the roster. Mm-hmm. He was How do you feel about up that? his ribs at work. I was like, dude, no you cannot this, do dude. this. You cannot do this. <laughs> this is not, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is happening? Um, do you think, I mean, I guess really what annoyed me is him wrangling Wynn into it. Cause I hate that of like, well, if you don't help me, I'm just going to do it on my own. So you might as well help me. And we're going to try to keep this a secret. And we're going to keep it a secret. Like, so it's just like, yeah. uh, like, I mean, if you're going to do it, do it. Like, you know, get some training, do it right. So, I mean, I'm always happy for Jimmy to have more to do. I just want him to be safe. I want him. I mean, to me, because to me, it's like Alex, like Alex does go through her moments of like, you know, I don't have superpowers, but Mm -hmm. Alex is really well trained. She knows how to fight. She, you know, and she knows how to deal with (laughs) aliens fight while fighting. That's the thing. She's trained specifically for that. So it's just a little frustrating to me. To be fair. And I can't believe I'm saying this. He was trained for the people he was going up against, just not Mm -hmm. the extra, hardware yeah. that they came with but he knew they had ray guns at that point yeah like, <laughs> like so in the first battle little battle scene with him and supergirl when we first the reveal comes out that they have this like he was holding yeah. his own yeah and then suddenly there's like oh crap <laughs> what is yeah. that she just got shot and shot through a building maybe i need to get down exactly and go low and get them off their feet which was still mm-hmm. a sound strategy except you got three people with weaponry that mm-hmm. you're dealing with yeah, I just, I, I want him, I, you know, I don't want anything to happen to my Jimmy. I need him to be safe. 
Well, this isn't Zack Snyder's murder verse. I think Jimmy will be okay. <laughs> I think he'll be okay. Oh, and it's not it's not Zack Snyder and it's not a Joss Whedon show. I think we're gonna okay. be okay. But do you think we get another masked superhero I can't on tell the you that. show? I can't tell you that. Cause like that's I don't know. Because there was an there was an announcement and it looks like the next episode is gonna address him. Because when I went to IMDB to see if in the next episode Lena's mother had a name, she's not listed. Yeah. But there are some stills from the episode that would indicate that yes, he becomes another mass superhero. And I know his name because I saw the spoilers. Okay. So. I'm not gonna look at the spoilers. I am going to Yeah, go someone had look someone and see what the article. next episode is. <laughs> Yeah, someone had posted an article for after episode two, and I was like, "Crap! I wish I wish they hadn't posted that." But I was in the MTR network scrolling mm. that group, and I saw it. I was like, "Shit! I wish I hadn't seen uh-huh. it." But okay, yes. And yeah. I deliberately avoided the picture. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's like literally like the it's right there in the synopsis for next week. <laughs> so yep. like, thanks, yeah. IMDb. Um, <laughs> It's right like there. you did so good with Lena's mom, but <laughs> yeah, like my God, like right there. Um, so don't go there if you don't want to know. I just spoiled myself. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess, I don't know, cause I'm, I, I really like on the Flash the addition of the new speedsters, but we're mm-hmm. in what season three with that. You know, Arrow at this point, the cave getting small. There's too many people in the dang cave. It's about seven folks in the cave. So I'm just like, but I'm okay with that because, again, like, they're in season five. They've slowly built their additional, you know, people. I'm like, this is season two and Jimmy is doing the most. (laughs) That's just kind of how I feel right now. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, so... Head of Cadmus is Lena's mom. Yes. I really love that actress. I think she's killing the role. Brenda Strong. She's yes. doing a great job. She used to, like, it's so funny because she used to just be that woman from Desperate Housewives. And now she's, like, <laughs> so intense. Like, she plays so many, like, female villain characters on these CW shows, and I love it. Um, the when she said that, like, goodbye, Mr. Meyer, to the bank robber, like, in his head mm-hmm. before killing him. Oh, no. Better. When they decided to go after Lena's gala. Mm-hmm. And she was like, you don't want to do that. And I, I, I didn't even connect the dots that that was her kid. I really didn't. Oh, he pulled yeah. that gun and she walked up to it like, I dare you. I just, like, I just want to say that kid. until you said it just now, I didn't even put like connect the dots to the like, oh, they were going to rob her kid's thing. <laughs> like, yeah. like, oh, I like, I, I hadn't even really put that together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and she walked up on that gun like, I dare you. Oh. And then he punked out like, oh, I didn't expect this woman to walk up on this gun like that. <laughs> She's that was so I was like good. she is she's great I like her so well when she said to them she was like uh act wisely I was like you know they ain't <laughs> like mm-hmm. like come on like you said it but you knew they wasn't gonna you knew they was gonna go out there and act a fool so, mm-hmm. <laughs> which they did and immediately got caught like they kept saying that they were here to do hood rat shit that's what they said exactly exactly <laughs> I do love that uh Lena so now, do you think we get some Win and Lena action? Because the way Lena kept showing up to Kara's like workplace and her house and stuff, I was like, "Dang, is she gonna try to kiss Kara now?" Are we just- it was a little stalkery. <laughs> yeah, it was a little stalkery. I'm like, "Dang, Lena, there are laws against this." Ah, just showing up at people's work. Um, so, do you think we get? You know what? <laughs> This would be a lot of uh, career changes for Wynn in the short time. But I could also see him being like a engineer or a scientist or something at Luther Corp. Mm-hmm. I, I could see him doing that. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now that we've given Jimmy a little bit more to do, I, I want Wynn to have a little bit more to do than just, you know, be the Cisco mm-hmm. <laughs> of the show. <laughs> I really also enjoyed um him and jimmy seeing like when jimmy comes to the deo to see him 
That yeah. was really, really nice. Like, I yeah. have forgotten about their kind of... Because even when they both, like, Kara, they still got along with each other. Mm-hmm. Like, they were still nice to each other. So I, I realized we hadn't seen that since he doesn't work at CatCo anymore. Right. Uh, well, and it was one of those things, too, where... Oh, we just jumped around a little bit because we started talking about the villain and... Uh... Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> There was one image, because I have it playing in the background again, to get screen caps for the uh, for the write-up. <laughs> did you did you get, did you you peep the Arthur moment? You know the Arthur, um, that meme where it has Arthur's face pulled up. Did you peep it? No! When they're at the party, when the guys show up, and they have this image of Jimmy balling up his face. <laughs> he was like... So I'm like, that's Arthur. Oh, my God. <laughs> When people crash your party <laughs> and you don't have your hoodie, your vigilante hoodie, balls and fists. You may not use it. I'm actually going to use that as a screen. <laughs> it was so good. Was oh, so but yeah, good. back to Wynn and Lena. I like the two of them working out the um the device together. <laughs> and then when they came from up under the counter, they were like, oh, no, no, that's not what was going on. <laughs> We already had one of those those reveal moments earlier. Oh my god! Ah, oh, I loved it though. I love the two of them working together. I lo- I I know it's all fake science, and I know like you know it's all comic booky science. But I get all mm-hmm. excited when they like figure out some tech stuff. They're like, "Oh, we have to inverse the <laughs> I get like all excited. It was adorable. I was like, "Yay!" I and I love when they came out from underneath, and they're just like, "Oh, we weren't." We nah. weren't doing that. No, we we <laughs> saved everybody. We stopped it. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, I was like I just wanted him to be like, ta-da. <laughs> I'm going to send you this to you. Hold on, I'm going to send it to you. <laughs> Can you get to Facebook? You see this. <laughs> I need you to see this. It was so out there. I'm like, oh my God, that's out there. I didn't catch it the first time, but now watching it for the screen cap, I was like, that's an Arthur moment. Oh, my God. Like, mm, done. Oh, we're nuts. I'm nuts. Here we go. Okay. I'm sending it now. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. there it goes. <laughs> I just, I loved everything about this episode. I, <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I hate you so much. I'm totally turning I this into a meme. <laughs> I might have to meme that one. <laughs> Show me the lie. That's an Arthur. Oh my God, his best. Yeah, his he's so balling his fist up. Oh my God. <laughs> this is the worst. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, th- oh. th- you guys. This have I ever laughed this much at an episode of Supergirl? Have I ever like this thoroughly enjoyed myself? <laughs> and not because it's bad. Like I usually enjoy it. But this was just, it was over the top good. I enjoyed myself so much. <laughs> it was so good. The, like the writing, everything was just so well done. I just, yeah. I just, you guys, seriously. <laughs> it was enjoyable. I laughed. I did struggle with the episode though. I felt, and, and not in a bad way. It goes back to, I like, chocolate but you know I prefer Almond Joy to Snickers so it's like me saying that oh you gave me a Snickers but I really wanted was an Almond Joy so I feel like it's the weakest of the episodes this <gasps> season but that doesn't but let, let me qualify that it was still entertaining it was still entertaining okay it was just some of the logic leap so with going back to the villain storyline okay <clears throat> Miss, I'm just going to call her Miss Luther until we get a real name. So Mrs. Luther is saying that I'm trying to turn people against the aliens and this Alien Amnesty Act, which seems to be working because then they did the report where 63% now want to repeal it. But that didn't make sense to me. You have humans using alien weaponry, and that somehow mm-hmm. translates into repealing the Alien Amnesty Act. That makes no sense. But the, I, I agree. Um, <laughs> it makes no sense. <laughs> You but, don't have to fight me on it. No, it makes no sense. But the the thing about it is that also fear makes no sense. Like, 
we are we are recording this on election day where the fact that Donald Trump is even on the ballot is ridiculous. But that is what fear can do. Fear can like yeah. take your like most irrational thoughts and make them like something like valid to you. Because this yeah, it makes no sense that these people have alien tech. See, we have to get rid of all the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like or people shouldn't have alien tech <laughs> like, right you know like like i loved Kara arguing with that guy in the office she's like she's like nobody should have alien tech like weapons aliens or humans and he's right. like yeah but da-da-da. like his reasoning was just so dumb um, it was donald trump logic yeah exactly but i get it in the sense that it, it it it's fear based, so it really doesn't matter mm-hmm. <laughs> what the the logic is. It's just like you have to scare people. It's like the similar thing with the flash. Uh, was that last week with the hologram? With the hologram, uh, dinosaur monster thing. <laughs> um, it's just like all like these people were so terrified of this thing. That it wasn't the the monster that was destroying stuff. It was them being terrified. It was like their fear causing the accidents and the um and all the, of out, the yeah the fallout the yeah. fallout yeah. <laughs> so I th- I th- I took it that way. I was just like, yeah, this doesn't make sense. But people are dumb and stupid and scared. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a, okay? What a, what were your other issues? <laughs> Jimmy's story. It just it the the maturity missing from it. It was we've had a very mature Jimmy Olsen, and the leap of logic, the way they got him to wanting to help and deciding to help it. It was regressive, for lack of a better way to put it. It didn't feel like Jimmy. It felt like Karen. To be honest. <laughs> This is a logical leap that Kara would make. This is not a logical leap that the Jimmy they've introduced us to would make. Okay. Yes, he'd want to help. Yes, he'd want to find his purpose. But then there's nothing spurring him to be this reckless. And people might say, well, the breakup with Kara. I'm like, no. Nah. Like, was he disappointed? Yeah, but he's a grown-ass man. He'd be all right. I think <clears throat> for me, that was more like I saw it being built in the sense that he's talked about this before. Like he's talked about feeling like he, you know, feeling like just a sidekick and feeling like he, he, he wants to do more. So yeah, like you said, that conversation with Wynn was really like great where he was just like, you know, you found your purpose. I want to find my purpose. Like that's very understandable and very relatable. Like, (laughs) cause it happens like, you know, when you start to realize that, like, this is not what I want to be doing. And even he struggled with that last season, too, um, with wanting to um, be out doing stories and not being the... Because when Kat moved him from, like, <laughs> photographer to head of the photography department and he wasn't really mm-hmm. going out on stories anymore, he struggled with it then as well. Of yeah. feeling like he wasn't doing enough. So, I mean, I'm I'm with you. I totally like. I I see the where you could be frustrated. I just really wasn't this week. I'm so surprised. No, no, I feel like we're never on the same page no, anymore. No, what happened? <laughs> no, I wasn't frustrated. It was just it felt like filler. I didn't focus as much on this episode. But I enjoyed it. That's not me not enjoying it. I would give it an A minus. I like the episode. I just feel compared to other episodes this season, it wasn't as strong. <laughs> I, this but is my I'm, favorite what episode brings up to this an A season. minus instead of a B was Mike. Mike's <laughs> episode. And now on like rewatch to get these screen caps, that Arthur Fist, man, that, that brought it up to that A minus. <laughs> oh my God. He was so good. Oh my god, he was so good. 
I'm sorry. I just I just I'm finished gonna, creating the meme. By the way, meme the hell out. I just I'm finished creating. I'm gonna, gonna post that. this. <laughs> I'm posting it. I'm gonna, I'm, first of all, I'm going to send it to you, and then I'm okay. going to um, post it in the group because this is just greatness. <laughs> I'm having way too much fun with this. Guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, you cannot see any of this, but just know that there's a meme. It'll be posted on the Facebook page. It's, it's glorious. <laughs> on the Facebook page or in the group? <laughs> I'll, I'll post it on the um, MTR Facebook page. I'm probably okay. also going to send it to you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of hard work happening. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed this episode so much. I did. Oh, my God. Uh, but, yes, they're... Uh, I'm, I'm giving this episode an A+. Plus. <laughs> I, okay, I, so it averages out to an A. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's just, it's just Got so it. <laughs> so what were your positives? Because I've been using um, the stuff I've been using in my write-up, but I want to start using what we talk about here. So what were some of your positives? <laughs> um, my positives were definitely Mike, obviously. I swear, Look like, my that. notes are just chunks of quotes from the episode from him my <laughs> positives are mike maggie and alex um even kara was still throwing dax some shade he was like oh i haven't got a party like we used to have parties on dax all the time she's like whatever like you know we we partied on krypton too i was like no you didn't y'all were had sticks up your butts um <laughs> <laughs> and uh oh operation doubtfire <laughs> I died. That's oh great. I'm <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. Um, Operation Doubtfire killed me. I like, I think <laughs> I was looking away for a second. So like I wasn't like I was not looking at my screen. And she was like, Operation Doubtfire. And I looked up and I was like, this bitch. Because <laughs> actually what I thought she was going to do was I thought she was going to... Um, have John pretend to be her. Me too. I thought That's, we were going to that. That would have made the again. most sense. We got barely any David Harewood. Uh, I know. We like you can have one David black man. Harewood. You can have more than one black man on screen at the same time for extended periods. It's okay. Nope. It's, it's like okay, the Walking CW. Dead. It's like the Walking Dead. There can only be one. <laughs> it's like Highlander. Highlander. Black Highlander. <laughs> this is just how it is. <laughs> <laughs> I really, yeah, I I just realized. <laughs> and it's okay. And I was thinking too, it's a shame because when I see, when I saw um, David Harewood and Makad Brooks at SDCC, they really seem to hang out a lot. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they seem to be friends. But we so rarely see a scene where we get uh, Jimmy and John together. <laughs> Maybe it's because they don't want anybody to realize that Makata is taller than David. Dun, dun, yeah. dun. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so I give it an A. <laughs> plus. I would give it another plus. Cool. It, it averages out to an A, so that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, so, so good. I, yeah, those are my positives. Even... Jimmy probably would be my one negative in the sense that I'm like, no black man, we are not going out here in this hoodie and a baseball bat fighting <laughs> people with ray guns. Um, <laughs> but other than that, like I, I really like I didn't have a problem with his storyline in the sense that we saw it coming. I had a problem with his storyline in the sense that like, dude, we do not need another. <laughs> vigilante we do not need another sad oliver queen and i like oliver queen <laughs> but I'm like we do not need another sad oliver queen <laughs> yeah and I, I like the theme i like i like that it seems like each episode so far this season has had a theme so last week was about being survivors and this week is about finding purpose so um, um i actually like that mm-hmm i i i like, the title, I kind of really didn't, like, ruminate too much on the title. 
but Mm -hmm. it definitely was I think it was both like people being at cross purposes but Mm -hmm. also I think it's a little bit about like the people who are caught in the crossfire as well and I think that's (laughs) Jimmy is like he feels like all of this stuff is happening around him and happening to him and I think it's also Maggie a little bit Mm-hmm. where like she just can't catch a win like all of this stuff is happening in her city and she's clearly a cop that's like really dedicated and she's clearly also somebody like you said who cares about aliens and like them being able to have rights too but it's mm-hmm. like all this stuff is <clears throat> happening and she cannot catch a win yeah. <laughs> like, she can't she can't execute her purpose yeah she can't do the job for which she's been tasked to do for that's her life's purpose so yeah all the way around yeah Hey, like, look at, look at Supergirl being layered and funny mm-hmm. and characters, like, acting like real human people. See what you happens guys? when you get set free from the clutches of CBS? <laughs> My shade will never end. The clutches of CBS. <laughs> Although, uh, the one thing I will give CBS some credit for, um, and this is like, bare minimum credit because like you really only did this because you got called out but they are putting so much effort into diversity of initiatives right now Mm because they got called out so hard about having like i think they had like 10 new shows this season and and weren't they all white male leads they were if they weren't if they weren't all white male leads all the showrunners were white males Mm-hmm. so like even the ones where it wasn't it was still a white lead but it might not have been a white dude because I think they did have that one Katherine Heigl show mm-hmm. um, but all of the showrunners were white males <laughs> every single one and that's something that they have struggled with is like they they don't get a very good report the CW actually has a great report when it comes to both in front of and behind the camera they have mm-hmm. lots of um directors uh who are women women of color uh men of color but (coughs) cbs not at all (laughs) (laughs) sorry i have to i'm posting this to the group right now (laughs) you guys like y'all will see this picture and then you guys will listen to the podcast and you'll understand what this picture means (laughs) Just know it's all happening in real time right now, and it's hilarious. (laughs) Um, So next week, we will be back with episode six of the second season. It's called Changing. And I will also probably talk a little bit about the new Iron Man comic. I have such high hopes and expectations for this comic, you know, cross myself Please let it be good. I trust in Bendis. I do trust in Bendis. I know <laughs> not everybody does. I do. Especially when it comes to creating characters. To me, he's very similar to like a Jeff Johns over at DC. He does a really good job at launching characters, I think. Um, he, he really gets to the heart of who a character is. And I think he did that with Miles Morales. And I'm hoping he can do it again with Riri Williams. So... Yeah, um, I will be definitely talking about that next week. Um, I'm also uh, I only read the first issue. I think the second issue, if it hasn't come out, it's coming out soon. I'm also reading Mosaic, um, which is the new Marvel comic with um, a black male protagonist. You know, he's a brand new character. Um, I wasn't enamored with the first issue, but I'm going to be honest, it felt like I had to look it up to make sure that the writer was black because it felt like they were trying really hard to be black and black, 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 black. The writer (laughs) is black. I feel like he was doing a lot. (laughs) So I'm still I'm still giving it a try because I, I think launching a new character is like really, really hard. Especially yeah. a new character that's not a legacy character. So I'm I'm still reading that. So I can also talk a little bit about that one next week. Um, but yeah, the character reminded me a lot of like, because he's a like NBA player. And he reminded me of kind of like a, like a LeBron or a Dwayne Wade. 
Um, and the girl who's his girlfriend in the comic is clearly supposed to be like a Iggy Azalea type character. Mm. Her name is yeah. like <clears throat> T-Fleek or something like that. I was just like, this is a lot. <laughs> Y'all are doing the most. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll see. I I definitely am giving this one a try because um, I like the, the concept of it. It's basically this guy who becomes an inhuman and he can kind of like take over people's bodies. Like he doesn't have his body is amorphous and he can take over people's bodies. Then when he leaves their bodies, he still retains like part of their memory and their skills. Oh yeah! Wow, so, that sounds interesting. Yeah, so it's pretty. It's it's an interesting concept. Um, the writing felt like it was trying a little bit hard, but it's it's an interesting concept. So that's another new one that I'm I'm keeping up with. Um, yeah, so it looks like the new issue of Mosaic it will be out tomorrow as well. So I'll probably read that one and the Riri Williams one, and we can talk about that next week. Cool. Sounds good. All right. Um, thank you, guys. Um, we record this really, really early, usually on Tuesday. Um, so if you have feedback for the show, probably the best thing to do is to email it, like, right after you watch it. Um, otherwise, we'll probably end up reading it the following week. Um, yeah. But, yeah, we we just – the only way to get this out to you guys, um, also with our, like, time differences – um, is to do it really, really early on Tuesday. We're actually doing it late. That was me doing air quotes today because uh, we both have a little bit more time with it being election day and everything. Yeah. So uh, hope you enjoy. Please, we love hearing from you guys. Send us any feedback. I'm posting this picture in the group like ASAP. Um, so everybody... You won't know, you won't know what this means until you listen to the uh, podcast. But hopefully, you'll listen to the podcast because you'll, you'll see this picture and be like, "I have no idea what this means." What are they doing? What is happening? Like, what's with them? happening? It's just being weird now. All right, thank you guys, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye bye.